Hi, I'm Mort Satin and I'm the Salt Guru. When most of us think of soft water, the first thing that comes to mind is soft, lustrous, and easy to manage hair. Washing clothes in soft water leaves them softer and prolongs their use in addition to saving a considerable amount of detergent. Best of all, you don't get that ugly ring of soil lining the bathtub. Now, the ability of water softeners to get rid of hard water minerals has been known for years. And in addition to the health and cosmetic benefits, they have contributed greatly to eliminating plumbing maintenance costs associated with scale buildup. Well, what actually is water softening and how is it carried out? Water softening is a process of reducing the dissolved minerals, calcium, magnesium, manganese, and iron ions, con the concentration uh, that they occur in hard water. These metal ions react with soaps and detergents, hindering their ability to foam up and also cause a soil precipitate, as I mentioned, that familiar bathtub ring y yuck. The uh, calcium and magnesium also precipitates out as hard deposits on the surfaces of pipes and heat exchangers. Finally, the hardness minerals lead to galvanic corrosion, which can actually rust plumbing. So obviously the goal is to remove those hardness minerals, and the appliance that does that best is an ion exchange water softener. Now, the process of water softening is actually quite simple. The hard water to be treated is passed through a bed of ion exchange resin. Negatively charged resins absorb and bind hardness ions, which are positively charged. The resin initially contains sodium ions, which exchange with the hard calcium and magnesium ions in the hard water. And the water pass, as the water passes through the resin column, the hardness ions replace the sodium ions which are released into the water. The harder the water, the more sodium ions are released from the resin and soften the water. Now, as the resin beads become loaded with the undesirable hardness ions, they gradually lose their effectiveness and must be regenerated, a process that is accomplished by passing a concentrated sodium chloride solution through the beads so that they return to their original state. The wastewater is then flushed out of the system. Now, most water softeners have metered control devices to minimize the frequency of this regeneration. However, like many other things these days, the water softening waste release has come under fire from certain environmental quarters, even though it has not been proven to be a problem under most practical conditions. In response to these concerns, the Water Quality Association decided to study the environmental impact of conventional water softening. The goal of the study was simple to determine whether ion exchange water softening is an eco-friendly technology that might be able to contribute to the efficiency of home heating technologies and as a result uh, in a reduced carbon footprint. In order to carry out the study, the prestigious Battelle Institute in Columbus, Ohio was contracted to do the work. The study design was simple and fairly straightforward. It focused squarely upon testing the impact of softened water on the life and energy use of appliances commonly used in all our homes. Scientific tests on heating efficiencies of gas-fired water heaters, electric water heaters, and tankless water heaters were, were tested. In addition, accelerated tests on longevity and maintenance of these heaters were carried out in addition to analyzing the impacts of soft water on plumbing fixtures such as shower heads and faucets, as well as home appliances such as washing machines and dishwashers. Overall, it was a very comprehensive uh, series of tests. Now, as you can see from the photographs, 
There was a very wide range of equipment em- employed in the study carried out at the Patel Institute. Uh, there were large electric uh, storage water heaters, there were natural gas storage water heaters, and they also had the newer generation of indoor instantaneous water heaters, or the tankless water heaters. The results of these studies showed that with softened water, gas and electric water heaters maintained the original factory efficiency ratings over a 15-year lifetime. But with hard water, there was as much as a 25% loss of operating efficiency in water heaters, an incredible difference in energy utilization. With soft water, the indoor instantaneous gas water heaters, or the tankless water heaters, maintain the original factory efficiency rating over a 15-year lifetime, while on hard water, the heaters completely fail to function because of plugged up scale in the plumbing. After only about a year and a half of equivalent hot water use, about one-tenth of the useful life of the appliance. Furthermore, softened water saved anywhere from 40 to almost 60 percent of the costs compared to operating on hard water. When tested on shower heads and uh, on faucets, soft water maintained a brilliant luster on the finish and a full stream flow. The, uh, as mentioned, the faucets on soft water performed perfectly throughout the study as well, as if they had just been installed. With hard water, shower heads scaled up and lost 75% of their flow rate in less than 18 months. Faucets on hard water could not maintain their required flow rate because of this buildup of scaling. The strainers on the faucets using unsoftened water were almost completely plugged after just 19 days of testing. Now, it's also interesting to note of very recent publications in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences entitled opportunistic pathogens enriched in showerhead biofilms. Now this paper describes the potential for scaled up showerheads to harbor pathogenic microorganisms. And that is because uh, uh, it provides them a home. These microorganisms cause pulmonary problems. Without scale buildup, these microorganisms don't have a chance to anchor and grow. They simply get washed away uh, off of the smooth surface of the faucet or the showerhead. But scale buildup provides them with a comfortable home. And it's particularly interesting to read the final conclusion of the authors. We conclude that showerheads may present a significant potential exposure to aerosolized microbes, including documented opportunistic pathogens. The health risk associated with showerhead microbiota needs investigation in persons with compromised immune or pulmonary systems. So here is another benefit of softened water, an extreme health benefit for certain people. Now back to the Patel study. Now the following photographs tell the story of differences between softened water and hard water on the operation of appliances such as dishwashers and washing machines. Just look at the difference between the two. Not only does softened water do a better job, but it becomes immediately apparent that the wear and tear on the machines is a lot less with soft water. Now here you can see the impact on a laundry tub. Now just look at the buildup of minerals from the hard water on this machine on the right hand side. The net result of this study proved beyond any doubt that by maintaining a high level of efficiency, home water heaters, faucets, shower heads, and various appliances will use significantly less energy, resulting in a dramatically decreased carbon footprint. Appliances will last longer and contribute to less waste than landfill, and finally improve health by eliminating scaled surfaces that could harbor pathogenic bacteria. Water softening. It's good for you, and it's good for the environment. This is the Salt Guru saying goodbye for now.